Oh hey, it's Wes. And today we have an incremental update from Amran. You've probably heard of the Amran 200X. This LED light is ubiquitous. It kind of set the bar for a value priced option that is reliable with good quality of light. And well, no one asked for this, but here it is, the updated Amran 200XS. What have they changed? Well, all they've really done is increased the quality of the light that comes out of this. So, how does it stack up? Well, we're gonna go in depth. I took it apart, I put it back together. I wanna know how this works, I wanna know how well it works, I wanna know what's inside, and what you can do with it. As always, with the categories, number one being build quality. Since this is an Amran and not an Aperture, they're the value brand of Aperture, this has a lot of plastic here because we're saving money. But also, in saving money, we're saving weight. So this is a fairly lightweight device. Now if we look down at the bottom here, the light stand mount, we have like a plastic resin around an aluminum mount, so that's reasonably strong. The arm itself locks down very, very well. I use this a lot with just a full, full-size softbox, 36 inch I think, with a grid, very heavy box. This had no issues with that. We have an umbrella holder on the side, which thankfully is removable. I often take those off because I rarely use umbrellas. Big long arm. The arm, you can't pull it out to adjust the position of it, which is unfortunate because this is an enormous handle. It would be nice to be able to stick that somewhere else. And if you look at the top and sides, it looks like everything's made out of plastic, but there's actually a metal subframe underneath the plastic. So if you take this apart, this red ring here isn't just cosmetic. This is actually the metal subframe showing through. So the whole front mount is built on this metal frame, and then there are other metal frames that come back through the device. And if you're wondering just how generic this device is, it appears to be specifically made by Amran by Aperture. If you look inside, the circuit boards are custom made for them. I did wonder, because this light looks a lot like the new Colbor CL220 light, similar specs, similar size, but you take them both apart, they're all completely different on the inside. No worries about that. On the back here, we have some very plasticky knobs. They don't feel phenomenal, but they had to cut corners somewhere. We have a nice, well-mounted DC jack. Got a little bit of wobble here, but that's okay. It doesn't seem to blink when you wobble it. Little tiny power switch. Now, on the front here, this part's unfortunate. The Bowens mount is all plastic. It's very thick plastic, but eh, I don't much care for that. Here is the Lightmons LA150. We have a metal Bowens mount, but with significant usage, you can probably see here, yeah, you can see the uh, shine of the corner there. This mount is bending. I can probably bend it back. <laughs> Might need some pliers. But yeah, metal isn't the be all end all. So this has some give to it and I can bend it back. Whereas this one, it's made of plastic. If it does give, it's gonna snap. And one more difference with the build quality, the light mons on the front here, it actually vents into the soft box. So the interior of the soft box can get very hot and it can build up heat. This one, it just vents straight through. It sucks in the bottom, blows out the top. That is the optimal configuration for heating and cooling. On the back, we have nothing special when it comes to the display. We'll talk more about that when we come to usability. Power brick is very large, and it comes with a locking AC cable, which is pretty cool, so that doesn't slide out very easily. Locks on the back, locks on the power brick. And finally, we get to the end, or the back. We have a back handle, but it's kind of plasticky, kind of small, doesn't feel great in the hand. It's still a handle though, just not the nicest. Overall, we're going to give this an 8 out of 10 for build quality. It's not amazing, but nor do I expect it to fall apart on me. Feature set. Here things are pretty much unchanged. We have 2700 to 6500 Kelvin, and just slightly improved color accuracy. Well, how improved is it? We'll talk about that in light quality in a minute. This is very quiet at all times. You can adjust the fan curves if you want using the Sidious app. 
And this is a very full featured app because it also services our Aperture counterpart. And so there is a lot of stuff going on in here. Obviously we can adjust the intensity, but so much more than that. We can change the dimming curves. So I like a nice linear curve, but you can make that whatever you want. And if we look at the curves on this light, they are pretty straight, but they don't line up perfectly. I much prefer the curves to be very close to one another so that if you decide to change your white balance, you don't have to then go back and change your exposure levels or your output levels. So there's a little bit of variance here, not nearly as much as some lights. So if we look at the uh, GVM SD300, very powerful light. At 5100K, you have over 250 watts of power, but then at other levels, you can be as low as 130 watts, which is unfortunate. But this one, the variance is much lower than that, thankfully. And you have source matching, you have simulations, you have effects. Let's go into the effects here. Faulty bulb, I'm not a big fan of that one. I don't like how the pulsing turns off completely at the end. It makes it a little bit rough. Explosion. Fire. So I want to talk about fire because this is usually the trickiest one. Sometimes they're a little bit jumpy and doesn't look realistic. This one, I like this. Yeah, that's good. It's nice and smooth. Fireworks. Pew! And you can go all the way into like syncing effects to music and everything. Like this is this is like way beyond what most will let you do. And also, as I said before, let's go back in. We can change our fan mode. I like to keep it on smart because then it's quieter most of the time. It's usually around less than 40 dB anyway, which is nice. So we have our Bluetooth connectivity, we have a Bowens mount in the front, very important. We have the capability of doing external battery, but not stock. There's no easy way of doing that. You have to get the Aperture battery device that takes 14 volt V-mount battery, steps it up to 48 volts. So it doesn't come with that by default. So overall, I'm gonna give that a nine out of 10. Lots of features, not everything imaginable, but it's almost impossible to stick everything in there anyway. Moving on to light quality, and that is where they boast the purity of light. And so if I compared this to a flash, I used my 8300 Pro, which I found to be my most color accurate flash, the most neutral, and I can't tell the difference. It's a little bit greener. Just shifts a tiny bit green, which is unfortunate, but overall, very solid spectrum. I've noticed in the past that when doing headshots with continuous lights, sometimes the reds just don't look quite right. This one is bang on for that, for skin tones. So that's fantastic. And to sort out exactly where we sit between color quality of a flash, which is considered pretty close to actual daylight color because it's produced through incandescent light, through heat in a filament, versus this LED light. I brought my friend Katrina into the studio to do some headshots and I alternated between the LED light source and the flashlight source and in the end I thought I would be able to tell the difference and I can't. The only way I can tell the difference between these photos is how dilated her pupils are because when you take portraits using an LED or constant light source you end up with much smaller pupils. If you shoot with flash you're in a darker ambient environment and so those pupils dilate more. And actually, let me know. Do you prefer the look of wider or narrower pupils? It's, it's a look. And as such, here are two photos without using the cheat that I already told you. Which do you think was the flash and which was the LED? Got that vote locked in? All right, let's look close. Let me know down in the comments below how you did. Don't lie. And so color, when I think about color, I think about... Hello, I'm glad you could join me today. This painting will be a lot of fun, and I think you'll enjoy it. I'm gonna have them graphically run all the colors that we'll use today across the screen as we use them. Let's get started and do a fantastic painting together. We'll get 
beautiful, beautiful pink color here. Yeah. That's unbelievable how that just happens. See, all these little things just happen automatically. Don't you worry about it. You just sort of evaluate it as it goes along and just let it happen. Very gently, very gently. Here, I'm touching a little bit of white and I'm just gonna make a couple spots. You can watch the rest of that, link in the description below. If you want to pick up one of these, again, link in the description. It helps support this channel and feed my fat cats. So, light quality, I'm going to have to give this a 9.5 out of 10. If it weren't for that ever so slight green shift, it would be an easy 10. And honestly, that's the first LED device that I would say gets that close to incandescent or sunlight. Usability, here's where we get nitpicky, but honestly, these are the most important things to me. You've got light, how annoying is it to use? Well, power output range, as I said before, is quite linear but can be modified. Check. Venting, pretty good and doesn't aspirate into the softbox. Check. Built-in Bowens mount, big check. Bluetooth works great, seems to be quite reliable, and it can work in conjunction with a giant ecosystem. Check. Now, the app can be a bit complicated, has many functions. I feel like they could simplify this app again with the redesign. They've kind of tagged a bunch of things on and it's not the most logical anymore. Now, if you're used to the Sidious app, that's great. You're probably used to that. But as you saw in my phone, I have a lot of these apps. Some are simpler than others. This one's a bit complicated. And the fan is quite quiet. Generally stays under 40 dB, which is usually inaudible when it's behind the softbox at least inaudible to a focused or directional mic or a lav mic. My biggest annoyance with this is the rear screen. At some angles, it is fantastically visible, but at some perfectly reasonable angles, it just completely disappears. This is a huge annoyance for me. Like, right up here where the, the uh, handle would completely cover it, it's very visible. Why is it visible there? I don't know. Down here, where you're more likely to, you know, be at a funny angle or straight on almost. Hard to see. Down below, you can kind of see it, but then, you know, it's kind of blocked by the... Anyway, viewing angles are not good, and that's, that's really bad for me. Another thing that bugs me quite a bit is, although the DC cable for this is sufficiently long, and even if it was shorter, I could forgive them because the power supply comes with this aircraft cable to hang it off of your light stand, so that's fantastic. But the AC side of the cable is only about four feet long. I have some lights that were incredibly cheap that came with 12 foot AC cables. Now, maybe they're assuming that you'll have a extension cord running out to the base of each of your light stands or something, but for me, and especially if you're gonna be hanging this up onto your light stand, that cable's barely gonna reach the foot of the light stand. That's that's too short. They, they kind of cheaped out there and I'm not super happy about that. One last little finicky annoyance is this power switch is kind of upside down. Now, maybe some people prefer that, but to, to turn it on, you push it downward. To turn it off, you push it up. I don't know, that seems like an odd choice to me. And, our Bowens is lefty tighty, righty loosey. I don't like that. I'm sure there are reasons for that, like not taking apart your softbox or something, but no, don't, don't, don't do that. Everything should be tighty righty. If that unscrews something else, well, that's that something else's problem. Most of my issues with this are nitpicks. It is very easy to use light. I'm gonna give that an eight out of 10. Value. This is where Amran tends to do well. After all, this is Aperture's value sub-brand. So let's see, this one comes in at $350. They didn't raise the price, they just quietly updated the light, that's nice. Lightmons, the 200 version, this is the 150, comes in at $350 as well. There's also the small rig 220, looks just like this, comes in at $370, that goes up to 260 watts. But the coal bore, which we're actually using right now, that one is the kicker. That's the CL220, has a little bit more power, comes in at $280. 
But if you go into like the professional realm or semi-professional, you have the Godox NOLED M200 by is $780 and the Aperture LS300X is $1,000. So this is still a value priced light, but it's a decent price. If it wasn't for that coal bore that's really dragging down the price for the whole market at $280, this would be higher, but it's an 8.5 out of 10 now. All right, that gives us a 43 out of 50, or 86%. Let me know what you think about the Amran 200X S. Was it a necessary upgrade? Why did they even do it? Or are they just maintaining their market position and thankfully, they didn't raise the price? These days, everything's going up in price and so I love that they improved the product and kept the price point the same. That's great. Until next time, when we're gonna be having a look at uh, some smaller lights. Let's go take some photos.